Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about a very important topic, especially important for those from 1000 ELO to 2000 ELO, which is the majority of the player base. And the reason why in this ELO it's the most popular is because it is a very easy strat to execute and a lot of players looking to gain ELO fast will go for these strategies. And the strategies I'm talking about is the 1TC all in pushes where they make very little economy and invest everything to military and try to take you out really early somewhere around castle age now the reason why one tc push is very prominent at lower levels is because it's a very simple plan and it's very easy to execute but let's take a look at why people go for this like what is the benefit of going for a one tc push well we've already established that it's a simple and easy game plan that's number one uh, number two is that you don't need to ever adapt when you're doing a one tc push so it's very consistent you can do the same thing every time you go all in with a certain timing window where your opponent is trying to add economy and your game plan is to put everything into military and you don't need to ever adapt into something else you know you're going to go all in with military so you just throw all your resources into like knights into crossbows into siege into monks everything you need to put pressure you're not having that decision making of oh should i add economy should i expand none of that it's all about attacking obviously it takes a little bit more skill than that but for the most part it's a lot more simple a lot more consistent than other strategies it's also easier to manage a lower economy. Think of it this way, if you have 100 vills, is it really that easy to make sure none of them are idle? But if you have 40 vills, okay, there, it's pretty easy to make sure none of them are idle. You've got 10 on wood, you got like 20 farms and 10 on gold. Boom, easy as that. Uh, so obviously it's much easier to manage a lower economy. So if you just force your opponent to manage his bigger economy while you're managing your small economy and you have more military than him, you can see how that gives you an advantage as to your your game is a lot easier to play your opponent has to then manage way more than you and defend the big army that's quite a that's quite a challenge and then the last reason that people are doing this is because the surprise factor is huge and the surprise factor alone is sometimes strong enough to win games because if your opponent isn't ready to deal with 20 knights around like mid castle age then he's just going to die to those 20 knights because he just wasn't prepared for them and so at lower levels especially when they're not scouting you when they're not preparing to you know we're like you know thinking about it Wait, what is he going to do you know, what's his game plan and then they just get overwhelmed by army that they see last minute or last second then you can see how the surprise factor is just way too strong here and so these are the reasons why one tt push is strong and i'm going to try to give you guys a lot of tools on how to uh cover up those um you know or deal with those strengths of the one tc push and give you guys some of the strengths that the defender player has as well all right, so the main question here, how do we stop it? How do we stop the 1TC push? Okay, the first thing you need to understand is defender's advantage and what that is. Defender's advantage is mainly uh, referring to having the units out earlier than your opponent because they get produced at the same time, but he has to run all the way across the map to make his new units or his reinforcements part of his main army, whereas yours, they come out of the stable or the archer range or the barracks, whatever you're making, and they immediately join your main army. So having the defender's advantage basically means that you're going to have your reinforcements coming a lot earlier. This is extremely important because as your opponent is reinforcing, you might have a timing window where you have more army than him, even though you have less military out on the field in general, because he's got to run across the map, you just defend or you just bring them out of your uh, production buildings and they're right there ready to fight. All right, the second key point, so once we understand defender's advantage, we're gonna look out for that. When we have the advantage with the military, we're gonna take the fights, but before that, we have to do a few steps. So the second point here is that we're gonna wanna build away from the bottom of hills. We do not wanna be at the bottom of the hill, especially not with an important building like the town center. This is basically asking to lose to a 1TC push. If you make a town center at the bottom of a really big hill, if he gets the hill, which he probably will get it, he's gonna have a siege workshop there, mangonels, and it's so expensive expensive to repair a TC and the, the hill bonus gives the mangonel more damage and so your town center will fall easily and losing a town center is a big deal because it, it takes a long time to build it's very expensive and it's the building that allows us to gain an economy advantage so losing a town center quickly is terrible if you lose it slowly over time but you know you trade some units versus your opponents that's okay but you can't just lose the town center for free and very fast like that it's gonna snowball too quickly for you to handle it so build away from the bottom of the hills or you can make your buildings on the top of the hill so you control the top of the hill and that is good but definitely do not build at the bottom of a hill 
number one thing that you need to focus on when you're defending. The second thing is, this is when the, the push comes in. So when he's pushing you, you need to start buying time with the fences. Don't rush into counter units right away. For example, if your opponent is on th like three stable knights, he's gonna have like six to nine knights right off the bat in castle age. Don't right away think, okay, I need pikemen, right, right, like right away pikemen. Because the problem is you can't afford pikemen right away. If you added some town centers, uh, if you invest into your crossbowman tech, if you invest into a few knights yourself, you're on like, you know, one or two stables, you're not gonna be able to afford to right away get the pikemen upgrade and get blacksmith upgrades, get squires and mass them up and make more barracks because you only have one barracks usually. It's way, way too expensive, you're not gonna get there right away. How do you buy yourself time? Because we eventually want pikemen, but we don't want them right away. So how do we buy ourselves time? We buy ourselves time with defenses. Fight around your town centers. You can wall up a little bit if you can. You can make some monks to convert those, uh, those knights because monks are a great tool to counter knights in early castle age. And monks are also easier to get into. You know, one monastery, 100 gold per piece, no upgrades necessary. Very, very easy to get units. And you use monks, you use your town centers. You can even get fletching and botkin for your town centers if you don't already have it because you're going crossbow, whatever the case may be. Fight around your defenses. Those are easier to get to tools and then eventually work your way up to pikemen. That is the idea. You don't want to go with pikemen right away. You won't be able to afford it. Let your town centers kick in. Let you get the economy lead. Defend with monks and buy yourself time and then eventually switch to pikemen. And when you switch to pikemen, make like three, four, five barracks and then go pikes. Don't go pikes with two barracks. You're going to get like five pikes. He rolls in with 20 knights and he wins the fight. You're like, I have counter units. It's like you don't. The knights counter pikes in early castle. We know this. So definitely make sure to buy yourself time and when you go for the pike transition, do it right. You have to have a good number of pikes for them to be effective. All right, and the next tool we have available for ourselves is a defensive castle. One thing that I see Viper doing a lot and a lot of people as well at the top level is as soon as they get one TC pushed, they start booming on three TC. They do exactly what I'm telling you. They go for some monks, they buy themselves some time, and then afterwards, they start mining some stone, like in pretty much immediately. Like right when they see the push coming, they start mining a little bit of stone. And then five minutes later, so they buy themselves time for five minutes. Five minutes later, they have a defensive castle. And that's very hard for the pusher or like the the 1TC pusher to deal with the castle. They can't really kill it. So if you make a castle in your economy, it's gonna be very hard for him to move around that. And this is double as good if you have a good unique unit because you make the castle and that, that castle also acts as a production building to get you a strong unique unit on the field. And that is an amazing thing to have as the defender. So buying yourself time is key. And then after you buy yourself time, you have either counter units or a defensive castle. And then what do you do after all that? Like let's say you've stabilized, you have the economy lead, what do you look for? Well, this is where we look to eventually push back with our stronger eco. And we have three advantages. Remember the defender's advantage I talked about? We have that. We have the advantage of making counter units, which are usually cheaper, more, more cost effective, and will eventually overpower against the units they're supposed to counter. And then we also have the stronger eco. These three tools are amazing, but we need a fourth tool that doesn't come from game, but comes from the player, and that is patience. Our, our, our opponent's army is still gonna be strong at this point of the game. Even though we have more economy, our opponent will still have a bunch of siege, a bunch of knights, a bunch of expo, whatever he's making, he's gonna have a big army, but his economy is gonna be weak. So the more time passes, the more we get ahead due to our stronger economy. We just have to make sure we're not taking a lot of damage. So continue massing army and look to take a fight when A, he, you know, you're stronger than him, it's quite clear. B, he's threatening to take out a lot of your economy if you don't fight him. Then you might be forced to fight and it might be the right time, it might not, we'll see. You have to try it though because you can't afford to lose too much of your economy. Like if he's running in and about to kill 20 vills, you can't think, okay, I'm going to be patient, I'm not going to fight. You have to fight, so then just fight. Uh, but if he's just sitting outside your base, he's not doing a whole lot, be patient. Keep massing army, your economy is stronger, it's going to be kicking in. Don't rush to fight him, he's on the top of the hill, you run up, you lose your army and you're like, oh, well I lost. No, just continue massing, wait till he puts himself in a vulnerable position because he's forced to do, da to do damage. So he's going to move forward, he's going to try to attack you, and then when he attacks you, when he's in a vulnerable position or when he's threatening your economy, then you take the fight with your stronger economy, your counter units, and your defender's advantage. This is how you stop a 1TC push when you don't see it coming. Now, just before I end off the video, I do have a sneaky last suggestion, and this is something that is really easy to do as well if you see the all-in push coming. Let's say 100% yes or yes, your opponent is going for a 1TC push. You know this either before the game because of who you're playing against, or you can scout it, you see him selling stone, whatever the case may be, you know he's going all-in push. 
Again, it doesn't matter what he's making. It could be crossbow, it could be siege, it could be monks, it could be knights. I'll leave that all up to you guys. But whatever he's making, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna also go all in push, but we're gonna stay defensively. So we're gonna sell our stone if we need to. We're gonna go into like three stable knights. We're gonna go into like three range expo with fast ballistics. Whatever you wanna make, just go all in. Don't add a single town center. Don't add, um, you know, maybe one economy upgrade. Don't add too many economy upgrades. Go all in on military and just wait for him to attack you. What's the situation here? We're both going all in, but what are we making use of? Defender's advantage. Again, it's so key. Our units will be reinforcing faster. Therefore, when both of you guys bring all your military together, you're gonna have one or two extra units that will turn the tide of the fight towards you. And in this situation, we don't need to be scared of hills because we are stronger than our opponents when he attacks us. So as soon as he attacks us, surprise him by just rushing him with your army and you can fight him on the hill. Like it doesn't matter. You don't have to give him the hill and then wait. You can fight him right away and surprise your opponent. So it goes from him trying to surprise you to then you surprising him. If he has vills forward, trying to build siege, you can kill those. If he has knights, you can have more knights. If he's got crossbow, you can have more crossbow. Whatever the case may be, you're gonna have more of it. And even if he has crossbow and you have knights, you can still overpower him. If you just wait for plus two armor, then bring all the knights one shot and overpower him, that's fine. Similarly, the other way around. If he's got knights, you can go for like three range crossbow plus one monastery. You show up with like two monks and 20 expo. Even if he has 10 knights, you're gonna win that fight easily. So. Uh, this is a really good way to stop the all-in push if you see it coming and in my opinion it's the best way defender's advantage is key those one or two extra units really snowball uh, every single fight so make sure to you know, use that defender's advantage and make sure to uh, try this all-in defensive push yourself to stop uh, the one tc all-in push from your opponent if you can see it coming all right, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I really covered everything I knew about 1TC Push. If I did miss anything, definitely let me know in the comments below. If you have any extra tips for your fellow comrades on the AV ladder, definitely let them know in the comments below as well. I like to have a healthy community that helps each other out, and you know, there's open discussion for everyone to pitch in their opinion. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.